Hello everybody and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. Uh, today we're doing a book review on the Vagina Bible by Dr. Jen Gunter. And uh, I'm a bit excited about this review as I'm quite a fan of Gunter's commentary on unhealthy and, you know, or irresponsible um, like promotions for in women's health, um, such as kind of many of the recommendations on Goop. Um, so that's when I started kind of following her and how I came across her um, articles and um, then obviously how I came across this book, um, which is also why I purchased it and why I'm reviewing it today. Um, the book came out of the confusing and contra contradictory information and misinformation sur surrounding um, the vagina, vulva, cervix and uterus and all of that which is contained within. Um, especially in this age of clickbait, celebrity-endorsed pseudoscience and overly dramatic advice from ill-advised, under-researched healthcare providers, um, often led by um, both Big Pharma and Big Natural. Um, so Jen Gunty is an OBGYN um, and pain medication physician, a writer, research and advocate for women's health, not only challenging politicians, celebrities and press um, over the plethora of terrible information regarding women's health um, care uh, in general, but also um, that, uh, but also correcting a lot of dangerous advice in academic publications. Gunter has stated that women have been marginalised by, by medicine for so long, um, their bodies and symptoms have been ignored um, and their voices are not listened to and this alone leaves large spaces for pseudoscience to fill. Um, so there's this massive gap where mainstream medical care has often uh, left women out in the cold and so women then um, are more encouraged to find alternatives or uh, alternative information, alternative pain um, care or alternative health care just to um, find out what is going on with them. So um, it is also and very toxically building on the idea that so the um, so kind of big pharma um, and mainstream medical care has often neglected women um, but then that leads them to this whole wellness um, alt health community but of course quite often in the alt health in the alt health slash pseudoscience community um, they very toxically build on the idea that women's bodies are unclean and dirty which is so ingrained in our religious and social culture um, and pseudoscience wellness um, as a community utilizes the language of purity cleanliness and naturalness Essentially, they weaponize the embedded cultural hatred of women's bodies um, to their own advantage. Um, Gunter, while obviously f um, focusing and falling on the side of science, um, because she states that testing, um, they, te they have testing parameters um, and those parameters are known. Um, however, she also states that um, the fact that big pharma equals bad and big natural equals good is an illogical presumption as both are trillion dollar industries that are based in capitalism and in selling women hatred of their bodies. Um, which is also where this book, it's just how it's packaged is different. Quite often the wellness community packages it as goddess and love for your body and um, all of those types of issues. But as Gunter points out, they wouldn't be presenting it this way um, if uh, mainstream medical community wasn't presenting it as dirty or unclean. So they are weaponizing and utilizing this language to sell uh, big natural. So um, this book <laughs> is uh, kind of where this book kind of falls into this gap between big pharma and um, big... Um, natural where she's not particularly for or against necessarily either side it's more that she believes in facts and um, in the facts that have been um, she can provide in the facts that 
have been researched and she will state in the book quite often you'll find you know this is what big pharma states this is what big natural states this is what the research states um, and so her conclusions would be this is where there's a gap in information and this is where we should go to research that and to find out more information so um, you know this book is really aimed at owners of vaginas, vulvas, uteruses and ovaries um, so that they can have an informed consent regarding their bodies. Um, Gunter kind of suggests that if you um, have been provided false information, irrelevant of where this false information has come from, it means that you are not getting informed consent. So if you have been presented um, information irrelevant of whether that's big pharma or big natural and that information is not the truth it means that you do not have informed consent um, whereas if you're presented with all of the information without either side sullying the message um, and you're provided the facts of the situation you can then provide um, an informed consent regarding your body um, so without all of the myths both medical and alternative um, and clickbait that have been thrown at women for so long. Um, I actually had this in audiobook format, which I listened to first um, before I could get access to this as an affordable book. And this book, when I got the audio, like I got the audiobook, um, you know, as part of my Audible membership at the time, the book in Australia or to get it to Australia was selling for about $75. Um, I have had this complaint about um, bookstores in Australia at the moment is that their health and wellness section for women is basically diet books. Um, they don't sell books like this there and this is really an essential book for women. Um, or actually it's an essential book to everyone, um, not you know, just women but it's an essential book to read and understand but the, uh, the healthcare section in bookstores here does not exist, it's just a diet book, um, hate yourself section. Um, so I listened to it first, then this obviously came up. I think it might have been Booktopia. I did get it online. It would have either been Booktopia or World of Books um, and got this at a like a reasonable paperback price, you know, of probably $18. For Australia, we have very high, our books are very expensive here. Um, but that like $18 to $20 was a perfectly reasonable um, cost to buy this book rather than like this paperback book before that was like 60 or 70 dollars that's absolutely ridiculous anyway got it so i listened to it first um so um this book as you can see it's not particularly a tiny book but it is set out um relatively really easily um this dedication is for every woman who has ever been told usually by some dude that she is too wet too dry too gross too loose too tight too bloody or too smelly this book is for you so um um, and this book is relatively well organised into sections. Um, it has a getting started section um, and, and then has under these sections uh, essentially chapters um, that fulfil the subsection. Um, the first section here, the getting started, um, which is the vulva, the vagina, vaginas and vulvas in transition, female pleasure, sex ed and child um, pregnancy and childbirth. Um, so this deals with... Um, bio women and transitioning um, transitioning women um, and it deals with um, a quick biology lesson sex ed and overall information including development sex pregnancy and childbirth um, the, sex, the second uh, section is everyday practicalities and V maintenance um, so it's medical maintenance food and vaginal health so she deals with how um, diet culture has kind of permeated um, women's biological sex function in the sense of if I think a lot she brings up cranberry juice as well um, if that stops things or you know those types of food myths that happen um, it also um, contains the bottom line on underwear so that's whether um, your underwear matters it also does lube and kegel exercises as well so it kind of deals with um, a bit of myth and management in there. The third section is skincare and cleansing. So this is dealing with vulva cleansing, soaps, cleaners and wipes. This is mainly like a hygiene section. Um, this, so this is kind of practical hygiene and myth 
um, relating to cleansing and the, really the medical dangers of douching and what an irresponsible practice it is to do to your um, body. Um, it also deals with safe hair removal and grooming, moisturizers, barriers and bath product products and how these deal with um, your body. Um, it also deals with STI medications and common conditions. Um, so we've also got uh, menstrual products and mythology, um, which deals with toxic shock syndrome, um, toxins in tampons and pads, menstrual hygiene, and relative myths surrounding that. Um, we also go. She also goes through menopause um, and medications and interventions like cannabis and contraceptions and antibiotics and probiotics and how they influence um, what is happening um, and also medical intervention such as labioplasty. Um, she also then has a whole section on STIs um, and then a whole section on the conditions like yeast and bacterial vaginosis and all of those types of um, issues that women come across. As you can see, um, there's a relative um, significant amount of information in STIs and the conditions that you face with your vagina and vulva. Um, we then come in to um, vulva symptoms such as pain during sex, vulva itching, odours um, and conditions that happen related to sex such as pain or bleeding after sex. Um, so whereas the first section kind of deals with the biology and essentially a sex ed listen, this is more kind of the advanced sex ed and what happens when you hit problems that you don't know about. Um, the last section is putting it all together and this is kind of an overview um, and, uh, you know, sum up of um, internet. So medicine cabinet rehab, internet hygiene and apps and journal of old wives tales. So she just kind of addresses... Um, more of the mythology surrounding, um, you know, essentially the vagina and vulva. Um, so Gunter's writing is concise. However, she also provides you with multiple scientific content for what she is saying. Um, but where the, and she also describes where the research falls short. Um, at the end of each chapter, um, so you'll get a chapter, um, and we'll just go through here. So this is the introduction. Um, she gives you a mapping of the, the um, vagina and vulva. I'm not going to blow these out. I don't get any. Um, I didn't get any money from YouTube, so I don't care. <laughs> um, so there are illustrations in here. Um, including this one which is this is a, a medical um this is a medical diagram um and then this is about the clitoris so she shows you how the clitoris fits in um to your vaginal land, landscape um so at the end of each chapter what you will get is, is this bottom line um and essentially it sums up what's happened in the whole chapter um so um, these essentially bottom line overviews um, are actually very useful in the scheme of things um, because you can actually go back to reference um, these bottom lines and you'll see the overview of what's happened in the chapter, um, meaning this is, you know, if you're trying to refer to something you can't remember if it's in the STI section or the bio section, you can um, go back and find it. Um, so, um, okay... So that is hair removal and grooming. Um, she does have various um, pictures in there if she's referring to something in particular. Um, so she has um, the um, menstrual products and mythology is chapters 17, um, 16, 15, 16 and 17. And they discuss, discuss menstrual toxic so shocks shock syndrome um, because there is essentially toxic shock syndrome can happen to a hundred percent of the population um, but menstrual to uh, menstrual toxic shock syndrome is specifically in reference to menstruators who use tampons um, so it 
it goes over um, essentially the rely tampon um, which is where a lot of these warnings um, came from I have done a whole video on the rely tampon and TSS scandal um, but essentially from the 70s when um, they released the rely tampon um, essentially this is when TSS really started to kick off um, this is when they had massive amounts of death and this is when it became legislated to have those warnings inside of um, your tampon packets. Um, they did remove rely tampons um, from the market. Um, this was specifically the US, by the way, um, that the rely was released in. Um, but they did release um, the rely tampon um, and forced everyone to put those safety guides in. Um, so essentially um, any internal um, item worn which is tampons, contraceptive sponge, diaphragms, um, diaphragms eh, and menstrual cups can all increase the risk of medical TSS. Um, so um, all of them can result in TSS. Um, she also notes that um, there is zero difference um, between the TSS risk in uh, big label manufacturers um, tampons and 100% pure cotton um, tampons. Um, she goes over practical um, safe safety um, in using tampons. Um, she also goes over sea sponges and basically why you should never um, use them. Um, she actually mentions at the time of this publication of the book, which I think was 2018 to 2019. Um, okay, so this was first published in um, 2019. Um, so we can assume the information is around two years. Um, from now, it's um, illegal to sell sea sponges for menstrual use in the United States, and the FDI, FDA has sent warning to several retailers. Um, they essentially are um, aquatic organisms and they cannot be um, they cannot be sterilized um, so the problem with that is that um, she's actually done testing on it um, herself um, and found that there was zero way to kill the bacteria in a sea sponge um, and so she says basically it is unethical to sell them and use them for your menstrual cycle. Um, she goes over polyester foam products and crocheted, crocheted or knitted tampons, um, uh, which she also researched. And um, so basically, she says that there is no data on cotton, um, on cotton-related um, tampons. Um, the bottom line is only 1% of women are at risk of developing menstrual toxic shock syndrome um, and the key mechanism in menstrual TSS seems to be the introduction of oxygen but other factors may be involved. Do not assume menstrual cups are safer than tampons. All cotton tampons do not appear to be safer than those with cotton or rayon or cotton and viscose and do not use sea sponges. So she goes over the fact um, whether there are toxins in um, tampons and pads. Um, her conclusions are ingredients, components don't have to be listed on pads and tampons, um, but every product she um, checked um, matched the FDA submission. Uh, the FDA requires tampons to be free of herbicides, pesticides, residue, um, or have such low levels that they are not medically relevant. No manufacturer makes raw data available on this from their products. Dioxin levels are exactly the same in 100% cotton organic tampons and rayon blends. Um, so it's also why I never trusted 100% cotton products either because you're essentially still a waste product. Um, there is no data indicating that glycosophate is in tampons, um, but that there is glycosophate in tampons. Um, so most, most so-called organic tampons have not submitted their own safety data, um, but they are cleared for use based on tampons that have already been cleared for the FDA. So basically what she is saying is that um, because 
100% cotton tampons are essentially the same as uh, tampons in general, that they have not submitted anything to the FDA to be approved and are basically being automatically approved based on rayon and viscose tampons. Um, so then she goes over reusable tampons and all of those types of issues. Um, and this video is getting super long now. In other words, um, basically, I would recommend this book to everybody to read and have in their libraries. Um, Gunter sums up um, the book. Um, so she also has lots of references in the back so that you can go and check these out. Um, so, you know, she's actually showing you where she's got her research from. Um, she ends this by, pay, by saying power and health are inseparably, link, inseparably linked. You can't be an empowered patient and get the healthcare outcomes that you want with inaccurate information and half-truths. You also can't be empowered when you are getting correct information, but the person or source informing you is making you feel bad or is not listening to your concerns. I have been attacked for coming out against the misinformation and disinformation that are presented to women as worthy of consideration. To me, the idea that women can take away what serves them from the um, masses of half-truths and lies about their bodies is the greatest perversion of choice. True choice, weighing your personal risk-benefit ratio and making a decision for your body based on that information requires facts. And it is this uh, quest to give women facts that keeps me up at night. And it is why I keep fighting. I want women to have the power that comes with knowing how their body works and how to look for help when their, her body may not be working as she hoped it would. I want all women to know when there is bias and medical subterfuge, when there are lies and when there is uh, patriarchy is just invested in keeping them frightened about their own normal and I may add glorious bodily functions. The patriarchal, patriarchy and snake oil have had their good run, but I'm done with how they negatively affect and weaponize women's health. So I'm not going to stop swinging my bat until everyone has the tools to be empowered, an empowered patient and those who seek to subjugate women by keeping them from facts about their bodies have shut up and taken a seat in the back of the class. That's my agenda. So this is definitely a book that everyone should get and read. Um, I will put links down below. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are in the day. And I, of course, will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.